It's just so classic. I get filled with nostalgia every time I see that. Because before I even played this game, I had seen a lot of James Bond movies. And that was my favorite part of the movies a lot of the time, was him just walking up through the first person perspective of the guy with the gun and shooting him and then the blood running down the screen. I just thought that was so cool. I used to pretend to do that in my room. I used to pretend like I was James Bond, turn around and shoot. So stupid. But here's just an intro of the characters, which is pretty interesting. Now, those are like pretty professional at the time. It's just goofy now with their weird animations. I remember when games always had that, like if you were idle for too long, it would, it would show you previews of the level. You used to need them sometimes to figure out what to do. So yeah, I'm just starting a new file. I like how it's done like, uh, the levels are done like pictures of a file. It's all like a document or a file or whatever. Yeah, go on double O agent. Because it's pretty much the only way I'll even play this game anymore, or Perfect Dark. I really like the, this intro right here. Maybe Bond just standing in a corner. <laughs> Point his gun left and right, and it, sh it swings around behind him. I thought that was so cool as a kid. This game, I still, when I play it, I'm still like, this game is so cool. Not because it is still really cool, it, it's not. It's honestly really goofy now, and it's like, it's comically bad in a lot of ways. The AI, the, the graphics, uh, you know, the way Bond's hand looks right there, you know, it looks awful, but... It's just, the game was so badass to me at the time, that this game is still badass to me. I always have fun sniping these guys. I remember I'd always shoot one, and once you shoot one, the other one starts running right at you. And I remember it was, like, really important to me that I killed the other one before he left this tunnel area. But that used to be really hard for me as a kid, because I was really bad at sniping. I'm really bad at sniping anyway. But... The, the weapon sway when you're zoomed in all the way on this gun is ridiculous. And this is a very ugly sniper rifle. It kind of looks like a squirt gun. But this is the best way to approach this part of the level. Because you can't just charge in there on double O agent. Because it, just because it's the first level it doesn't mean that the guards are any weaker. These guards all have strong weapons. Well, they had adequate weapons, but it, with so many of them, they do so much damage, they can completely swarm you right here. And these guys are the biggest pain in the ass of the level, because they're hiding in that... I'm not sure what you would call it, bunker kind of thing, where they can hit you really easily, but you can't hit him very easily. There's also ammo inside those crates. Yeah, these guys are withstanding two headshots, I'm noticing now. I don't think I realized when I was playing it somehow. But yeah, uh, that's why I just got shot just then, because I had, I definitely shot that guy in that bunker there in the head. But he somehow survived. Because I guess because it's double O agent. Or maybe I just missed, because it looked like I shot him in the head three times right there. But yeah, uh, I just, I remember hooking this game up. I got it for Christmas. It was my first game on the Nintendo 64. I was obsessed with James Bond. And I just could not believe that, it, that I was playing this game. Because I had played it before at like a Toys R Us and it was just the coolest thing possible to me. A James Bond video game. And th this is a really weird level. This, it's the very first level and it has some of the weirdest shit in it. Because this truck does nothing. That guy will run to set off the alarm. And I remember, this was another thing that was really frantic for me when, when I would play the game when I was younger, to make sure he did not set off that alarm. And a, a lot of the time I was bad at sniping, or just hitting in enemies at all. I'm much better now. But yeah, I, that guy's normally up in that guard tower there. At least the enemies uh, use the guard towers in this level. There's another level of guard towers that, that the enemies don't ever use, which really annoyed me. And here's something, another weird thing about the level, two things right here. That guy, he's obviously higher in command, he's like a general or something. 
but he, all he does is drop a slightly different gun. And there's nothing special about him at all. And I'll, I'll get into uh, later on when it's a bit more relevant as to why that's weird. And also there's a grating in that room that I was just in that doesn't have any points. So yeah, the objectives are just like typical spy objectives that don't really matter. You know, it's just get a gadget, go over here and do this. A lot of the objectives really suck in this game. And I have a distinct memory with shooting that lock off. Uh, I was really bad at video games. I was so young. I was like six years old. And I remember my dad had also uh, been playing this game a lot. And I hadn't even beaten the first level. And it was about like, it was just a couple days of having this, but my dad was able to beat the levels. Because we got to like the third level or whatever because my dad was actually able to beat them. This is so old that I would play the games, but I was I was still kind of scared to play the games, which is what was ridiculous because I don't know what it was, but there was something about these worlds with these enemies coming at you all the time, and me being so young that it was it was foreboding to play them, which is just hilarious now that this game seems so vast to me that it was foreboding to play, and it's not like I was a stranger to playing video games. Games. Yeah. This is a mission, uh, I mean, this is, that's an objective to destroy all alarms that I think is a really stupid, secondary, like, last minute idea objective. I never liked the, that objective, just destroy all the alarms. But anyways, back to my main point, that distinct memory I have with the, uh, the shooting the lock off. Is I was playing this and my dad was watching me, and I went up to that locked door and I was like, well, what do I do? And he was like, just think about it for a second. So here's one of the, the, uh, okay, here's one of the examples where the AI in this game isn't terrible. Because that guy was jumping out of the way. But the, the AI is terrible in this game. It's, it's just awful. But it's still challenging for how many guys there are and how much damage they do to you. But it's not challenging very much in the first level. And this DD4 weapon used to be like my favorite gun as a kid. This area is kind of suspicious. It doesn't go anywhere. This is all that happens with it. And it honestly it reminds me of an area at the beginning of Silent Hill 2 where you just run into a dead end at the very beginning. But anyways, about the lock. You know, I was sitting there saying, well, like, well, what do I do? And I thought about it for a second. And I was like, okay, I'll try shooting it off. And I just shot it off and my dad was like, there you go. He was really impressed with me. Or, well, I don't know, it seemed like it at the time. He probably was just like, yeah, there you go, idiot. But, I always remember that. I will always remember that. Okay, see that? That is an island over there that you don't ever go to. And that's one of the things that makes this, this one of the weirdest levels. First of all, there's that truck that goes nowhere. You see it from the very beginning of the level, and it goes to about halfway through the level, and you use it to... You have to even open doors for it to progress. But it goes nowhere, and no one ever gets out of it. It's weird. And then, there's that island over there that has another tower on it, and a, a turret. And uh, there is a boat in the game that was never used, and it's speculated that you would go over to the dock that I was just on, ride that boat over there to that island, where the turret would shoot at you, and there were also guards programmed to be there. And there you would pick up uh, some object, an object in the game that's not in the game anymore, but it can be found in the game's memory, called the, the Peaton Gun. Which was a laser, uh, laser gun used to hack into, uh, well, to break into the grating of the... Uh, of the facility in the movie, if anyone has seen the movie. I have, so I... It also, it's where you get the bungee cord that James Bond uses to bungee into the facility, which he does in the movie as well. That was supposed to be in the game, but I guess all that was just way too hard to program. I mean, this was 1996, and if it was released in 96, it, was, it probably started programming in, like, 94, 95, you know. The, the Nintendo 64 was a brand new console as well. So all that was taken out. And as for the truck, no one really seems to know. But it is... It is just... That makes this level so strange. And honestly, that the island is left in, and that so many beta things are left in, not just in this level, but there... 
In other levels, there are some levels that are going to be drastically different, and they have a lot of beta stuff left over that just make the levels really strange. There was also going to be a lot more blood in the game, which I, I don't like that they removed. I think that would have been cooler. It was, it was supposed to be more like Perfect Dark. Instead, you just get these red patches, which sometimes they those don't even appear, I've noticed, on, on this cartridge. This was not my original cartridge. This is a cartridge I bought a while ago because my, my original one in 96, it just doesn't work anymore. It has been played so much because of me being so into the game. As well as, you know, like everybody else, playing a ton of multiplayer in this game. I was even playing multiplayer on that old GoldenEye cartridge, like, like four years ago. Uh, with a friend of mine who was visiting, we played that, like, all day. And he fucking sucked. But, I just know the game to a completely unfair extent. But yeah, the, this cartridge, the guy who had it never beat it. He'd only started two files. One, he... They're both on Agent. One, he just uh, did like first two levels, and then he got about halfway through the game on the other one, so... My old cartridge has, has like two double O agent files, which was so impressive, but it had like all the cheats unlocked, you know, all the extra characters unlocked. This is part of the level that you won't see on uh, Agent, I think you see it on Secret Agent. Where all you do is go up to that press B, and that timer goes off. Making you think it's going to explode. But it doesn't. I don't... I don't know why a timer goes off. Maybe just to fuck with you. That covert modem model is the exact same model in uh, Perfect Dark. I'm not sure what I'm doing here. But yeah, I always thought this part was really cool. I think it's a fun part of the, the level, and uh, it really helps you understand the uh, the duck move out of the way, jump out to the left thing. You you need really need to utilize that to play to play this game well and survive on Double O Agent. But I have a distinct memory of being at this point in the level, and I I saw one of the guards. I remember thinking the first time I saw this level that one of the guards was female, and I thought there were female guards in the game. I also thought that the body armor were dead bodies. So here's one of the weirdest ending cutscenes to a level. He just jumps right off. I also have a very distinct memory of one time I pressed start right as I was running off the ledge there, and I don't think this really happened, I think I was imagining things, but I pressed start as he was falling, and since he looks into his watch on start, that the start menu looked all weird and fucked up, and I've tried to redo it several times, but I don't think that actually happened, I think I was just a stupid, wrong kid. But yeah. Bond is dead, he jumped off the ledge, and that's the end of the game.